Hello, everyone. If you're a cryptocurrency miner, this is likely a video you won't soon forget. It's one of your biggest costs in that, aside from the price of the equipment you buy, is your electricity. How are we going to solve that problem? Well, we're going to do it today in this video. So give us a subscribe if you like this video, hit the like button, and feel free to ask questions in the comments. That said, this is not financial advice. This is not electrical advice. This is not even professional advice. Hell, I'm drinking. So, this is the disclaimer. Enough talk. Okay, so, solar power. As you can see, none of these are installed. None of them are hooked up to anything. And I just have them sitting out here behind a building because I've got a thousand projects going on. And this is just, just one of them. So there's lots of different styles of solar panel. Um, these are basically your glass pane with an aluminum frame. And, you know, they're for different purposes. At one point I had this panel right here and that panel right there mounted on the roof of an RV basically trickle charging the batteries on the RV. I had, um, you know, air conditioning units and a skylight on the roof. So this one fit on one side in a, in a good location and that one in a different. And, uh, of course, I sold the RV and uh, ended up taking the solar off of it. But uh, these other panels are, if I'm correct, they are 36-volt panels, whereas the rest of these other ones here, these smaller ones, are 12-volt panels. And that doesn't matter so much as far as creating uh, power for utility for the grid because your inverter is, is going to push out um, 120 volt or 240 volt depending on what type you get. Now the inverter is basically what connects to these and feeds power to your, your electrical panel, your, you know, your circuits in your house. Okay, as you can see here, this is the back of the panels, and there's several different ways you can make these connections. Some of these larger panels are already set up for, you know, large, quick installs, and they basically have these quick connectors, which they come out positive, negative, and they snap into each other. So you can tie one after another after another into a string and just pop them all together. And, uh, and you can actually buy these connectors online. You can get them in a bag of 50 or whatever. I think they sell them on Amazon. And basically, you just strip and, and crimp and pop this thing in there. Um, but basically, what you got here, I don't know if you can see this, is that's a negative and that's a positive. And in the case of this particular panel, this is a 224-watt panel that is considered a 36-volt panel. Now, you're going to have basically three different sizes of panel. You're going to have your panels that are considered a 36, a 24, or a 12. Some of your 12 volt panels are going to have numbers on the back of them that say things like 17 volt. Um, this is a 55 watt panel. It's a 17.4, uh, 21 volt circuit, uh, open circuit. So this is an 8 amp panel. Figure this to be your your typical 12 volt panel, and then we got another one here that's 20, uh, 16 peak power when it's connected. So basically, when you buy these, you want to buy just like batteries. You want to buy all the same voltages. So if you're going to go ahead and order them from somewhere, um, make sure you order what matches your inverter, which is what you have to connect to your house to get the power converted to, to AC. These put out DC voltage at those ratings. And uh, you're going to want to match the size and the, and the voltage and all that. You don't want to mismatch a bunch of panels. Like I wouldn't wire these three panels together, although they would put out power. They would basically fight each other because you've got the larger panel, the smaller panel. It's kind of like putting a dead battery in with a bunch of good ones. You, you kind of lose a lot. So if they're all the same... Uh, you're better off or, you know, 
I mean, unless you're getting it for free, but even then I wouldn't do it. Anyway, so this is the panels, the, the different styles of panels, and uh, you've also got a different type that's actually got micro inverters on the back uh, for purposes of this. I'm not going to talk about those. Um, your per panel cost is a little bit more, I believe, that way, and uh, it comes it comes with a benefit. Um, in the case of the way these are laying here, right? You see this panel sitting in the sun. That one's got just a little bit of sun on the edge, and that one has none at all. In the case of having um, micro inverters, this one will be putting out full power. That one will be putting out partial power. That one will be putting out just a tiny little bit. You'd be at 100 watts versus like 10 watts or 5 watts because of the, you know, the light of the sky. In the case of the micro inverter, you're going to get all the power out of this panel. You're going to get everything that that's capable of and everything that that's capable of independently. In a string inverter, you want them all to be out in the open and all tied together because if you have one panel that's in the shade like this one, it's going to draw down the point where this panel can't put out its full voltage. Obviously, they would all be the same size. So micro inverters, if you're in an area where you have occasional shade or partial shade on different parts of the uh, of the array. We call the, the group of panels are an array. Uh, for purposes of this video, we're only talking about string inverters. Uh, so I've got a couple string inverters and uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at them now. All right, so this is an inverter that I just literally removed from using it today. Um, it is specific to a 110 volt AC uh, I believe it's 60 hertz. So this is for North America. And pretty much it's, it's stupid simple. You pump DC power into this thing from those solar panels. And it backfeeds power to your house. You're basically going through a standard PC plug. So you'll go ahead and plug that into the back here and plug this into the wall. That's all there is to it. It's just a standard household outlet. This is a thousand watt grid tie, which is the important thing here. You're gonna find these. They have the same looking connections. They are inverters, but they're basically made to run off of a car battery and give you electrical power off your car battery. That's not the kind of inverter you want you want a grid tie inverter. And basically what this does is it connects to the grid power and syncs up to it. And uh, this has been, it's been through a war. Um, and it back feeds to your electrical panel. Now you'll see on here, I don't know how clearly this is gonna come out, that this is a, it says it's a thousand watt, maximum output power is a thousand watt. Normal AC output power, 900 watt. If you look at the voltages here, you'll see the most important thing, because this other stuff takes care of itself. Uh, the input voltage range, DC 22 volt to 60 volt. And it's also stackable. When you are putting together your string of panels, say that you have two of the 36 volt panels. I would go ahead and tie two of those together, connect it to this, um, this inverter. Now you see that it says DC 22 volt. Basically what that means is this thing isn't gonna start putting power out to your house until it hits 22 volt when the sun starts to come up in the morning. Now your, your, your solar panels, they will be putting out power the very moment you get daylight. And it may only be one or two volts. And you get a little bit of sunlight on the panel. And that's not going to wake the inverter up. The inverter is going to wait until it actually sees about 22 volts. And sometimes you'll see it come on in the morning. And if it drops below 22, it'll shut back off. If you have a super cloudy day. So basically you want to size these things in such a way that they kick on as fast as possible, but you don't overload them. So in the case of the 36 volt panel here, 
you see that it says 36.6 open circuit but it actually runs at a rated voltage of 29.28 so you could take two of these and stack them together feed them to this panel now here's the thing that's a 224 watt panel theoretically you could have four of those you just can't exceed this input voltage so if you tie two of them parallel and then two of them in series you can get four of them you know two and two so you get your your 60 volt and your 60 volt tie those together and then feed them right here to your positive and your negative lug now this has thermal control it's got fans on it just like a typical crypto miner does when this thing gets warm it'll start the fans up it'll blow the heat out and basically that's the gist of it now I've got one here that is actually a little bit smaller unit um, this one here is a 500 watt and you'll see that it says that it takes in 22 volt DC to 60 volt DC same basic ratings as the other one uh, but it outputs 90 to 140 volt AC now it doesn't pick what that output voltage is it senses the voltage on the grid it senses what Hertz it's at and it go ahead and it, it and it feeds it back now here's the thing this unit this particular unit not that one is actually capable of feeding out at 230 so if you get the plug and you wire this in say you want to plug it into a PDU and back feed your PDU you can get you know the same thing and you'll see here power output this is actually reading that it is uh, back feeding the grid as we speak so it's generating power off of this one panel which I just have connected with some jerry-rigged wire um, I just hooked this stuff up to make this thing work and uh, and that's that's basically the gist of it you just you connect it to your your positive and your negative it's got a series of fuses it's got a cooling fan on it and uh, standard household outlet just like so um, in this case it's got a little on off switch there's a bunch of different designs of these things and I'll put some some links in the comments uh, you know in the description so you guys can see uh, what different types of things that you can you can look at um, if anybody has any questions they can go ahead and ask me and I'll, uh, I'll walk you through it it's really not that difficult to figure out once you actually get a gist of how it works um, so I guess that's all we got so that's basically solar plug and play I mean right here I plugged it in and it's generating power uh, what this one is making at the moment I don't have the meter on it I'm gonna guess um, obviously I would do a lot better if I didn't have the shade of this other building there you know uh, but you want them to be in full Sun and you want them to be pointed as angled and flat so that the Sun hits them dead on um, I've seen people build carports where they use the panels for the roof I've seen people build dog houses and wood sheds and all kinds of stuff where they they just cover cover them with the panel but your biggest thing is you want to be in a southward facing sky basically aimed at the equator and uh, and tie them in the nice thing is is it modular um, you can put one of these on your shed if you have power in your shed you can put one of those on your house you can put them you know wherever now in as far as the crypto miners go you're always going to be drawing power uh, some of these inverters and I'll put it in the description below they have limiters on them the biggest thing to the power company is they don't want you feeding power back to the grid without their permission so that's the part where I say you know this isn't professional advice if you should feed power back to the grid and you happen to do that uh, they will know because you have a smart meter and in the case of your smart meter it's going to tattletale on you and they will show up and they will turn your power off and they will make you disconnect anything you connected now if you're a crypto miner likely you're burning thousands of watts of power and that's never going to be an issue if you use these types of inverters that we have here uh, they have the capability of back feeding to the grid 
Now, there's other inverters, I'll put that in the description, that have limiters on them. So basically, if you aren't using the power that they're generating, it throttles back and it won't backfeed it to the grid. Saves you, you know, the electrical permits and the inspections and all that fun stuff. Uh, but it allows you to connect solar and utilize the majority of it. Now, in the case of a crypto miner, you're basically, let's say you got two or 3,000 watts worth of mining equipment running, uh, and you got 1,000 watts worth of solar. You're never going to use it all. You know, you're, you're, you're never, you're never going to get to the point where you push power back to the grid and trigger that little alert. But anyway, um, little warnings there. Uh, it's not going to cause a fire. It's not going to do anything. It's just the meter themselves don't have the software to count backwards. They're not meant to count backwards. So in the case of this, you're basically slowing the meter down. Um, if you're going to go full bore and buy a full-blown system that's going to take over all of your power usage, then go ahead and do it. But this is the plug-and-play version of saving your electric bill. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I'll talk to you later. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.